breaking news, and breaking hearts. Aww. This is the Steve Malzberg Show. In Slate, they have a piece uh, on dot com. Santa Claus should not be a white man anymore. And when I saw this headline, I kind of laughed and I said, oh, this is so ridiculous. Yet another person claiming it's racist to have a white Santa, you know. And by the way, for all you kids watching at home, Santa just is white. But this person is just arguing that, that maybe we should, we should also have a black Santa. But, you know, Santa is what he is. And just so you know, we're just debating this because someone wrote about it, kids. Okay, I wanted to get that straight. All right. Um, that's Megan Kelly on the uh, Fox News Channel uh, last, uh, I don't know, Wednesday, possibly. Um, igniting a firestorm and hearing it from the crowd, as Marv Albert would say, uh, after she said Santa Claus is uh, is a uh, white man. She also said that Jesus is white. Uh, we're going to focus on uh, on Santa Claus right now. And joining us uh, right now to do that is uh, Jamel Bowie, staff writer for the uh, Daily Beast. Hello, Jamel. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you for coming on. I, I really appreciate it. Um, okay, let me let me ask you. Um, your problem? Do you have a problem with what Megan Kelly said about uh, Santa Claus being white? Uh, not so much. I mean, I, if I have a problem, it's with the it was with the attitude of the comment, just the idea that it was somehow ridiculous that someone might conceive Santa Claus as a non-white man. I mean, first and foremost, Santa Claus is not real. And second, Santa Claus is an amalgamation of many different myths and people. And so when you have a character like that, it's, it's sort of flexible how you want to how you want to present him. Well, I mean, Santa Claus is is based on I mean, the, the, is Saint Nicholas. I mean, and, and Saint Nicholas, uh, uh, born during the third century in the village of Patara, uh, which at the time was Greek, um, and and you know, and so and has been portrayed um, as as you say, a fictional character though, uh, portrayed as white and in in every way you've seen them on every ad and every shopping mall and every float uh, for I won't say every but 99.99% of them um, and this article written by the uh, the the so-called culture blogger at Slate uh, Aisha Harris should know that that Santa Claus is in part based on you know they call him Jolly Saint Nick um, and and for her to say that uh, she would like to see Santa Claus replaced with a penguin uh, so that ki minority kids or non-white kids won't have to go through the, quote, insecurity and shame that she went through as a child because uh, Santa Claus was white and she wasn't. Why would on earth would that cause insecurity and shame? I mean, I, if I see Michael Jordan or my, my, my young son sees Michael Jordan and roots for Michael Jordan or, or roots for whomever these days, uh, and Michael Jordan's black and my son's white. Is he ashamed because the basketball player that's the best in the world is black? I mean, I don't get that. Well, so I think it's important to understand the extent to which even if it, even if we're just talking about fictional characters or fictional um, things, that children of color, whether they be black or Latino or Asian, have very, very few representations of themselves or anything positive. That like in the in the broad range of fictional characters for children, very few are people of color. And so, you know, I can completely understand, um, especially if you're growing up in an environment that doesn't have very many white people, trying to identify with the fictional character, and they're just not being a fictional character to identify with. All right, so that she could have said— me as yeah, okay. odd. Okay, but Jamal, she, she could have said— you know, I, I never really thought much about Santa Claus. I mean, first of all, her parents brought a black Santa Claus into the house, um, if, for, according to, if, I, if I remember what she said. Um, yeah, when I was a kid, I knew two different Santa Claus. The first had a fat belly, rosy cheeks, long white beard, skin as pink as bubblegum. Um, he visited my preschool, the local mall. Then there was a Santa in my family's household in the form of ornaments, cards, and holiday figurines. All right, so an, an ear carbon copy, but his skin was dark. So why would this girl, again, if she was given santa claus as a as a black man i mean why why would it why again why shame and insecurity unless it's her upbringing in other words why why wouldn't her parents as a little girl tell her you know santa claus could be black or white or or we believe santa claus is black but so why why on earth again where she grew up in a home with a black santa claus if she sees a white one outside the home does she feel shame and insecure unless there's something wrong with her upbringing well, I can't speak for Aisha's upbringing or um, sort of feelings. My guess, however, is it's just uh, maybe it's just a feeling of out of placeness. Even if you even if you have um, 
a black Santa and positive parents and positive representations, it's it feels a little weird when the one the thing you celebrate is vastly different or vastly different than the thing that everyone else around you celebrates. And I think that's a totally fair feeling to have. Well, I mean, again, I you know I I know it's a bad analogy because I can't think of a I I can't think of a fiction and, and and I don't mean this in any negative way, but if correct me if I'm wrong, I can't think of and you alluded to it earlier the paucity of it. I can't think of a uh, a black um, fictional character with that kind of significance, you know, to children and universally accepted like Santa Claus. So therefore, I go to you know like I I go to you know, the athlete that everybody's talking about or the or the, the best player in the league or whatever, which, you know, for a young boy growing up, I mean, is apt to be black. And and my son my son has the jerseys of, of one of the New Jersey Nets. And the New, the New Jersey Net in question is black. I mean, now he far from being shamed and, 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 and insecure, he relishes it. He roots for the guy. So that's why I'm thinking, and, and we don't have to be specific to Alicia, but, but anybody who objects to a white Santa Claus because they fear that kids who are not white will will grow up with shame and insecurity? I just don't get that. Well, I mean, I think you're I think you're generalizing a bit from Aisha's perspective to everyone. I mean, two things are true. First, I'm not sure that uh, everyone who is talking about this somehow objects to a white Santa Claus. I actually don't think anyone objects to a white Santa Claus. I think if people were objecting to anything, it was the tone and sort of uh, incredulous. Incred- agility that Megyn Kelly showed when she dismissed the idea of a non-white Santa Claus. That's what got people um, a little a little annoyed, a little angry. But what, why um, do you say that, that, that Megyn Kelly has built her career on white racial panic? <laughs> that, that, that was a nice transition. Um, well, we only got about a minute, so you're probably right. so safe. I say, but, yeah. I say that uh, because Megyn Kelly spent the better part of two years uh, hammering on a story about the new Black Panthers, who are apparently some nationwide group, um, threatening white voters and intimidating them at the polls. And this basically was shown by a variety of sources to be just bogus. Bogus. It seemed, it seemed like a, there, 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 there a were no called, people but with, the, with the billy clubs at the polls? There was a there is a group called the New Black Panthers that has a handful of members and I mean a literal handful. I could okay, Jamal, I'd love to hand. continue this maybe next week. I hope you'll come back. I really enjoy your your, your talk, your ch- our chat. Thank you very much, uh, Jamal Bowie, staff writer for the Daily Beast. Rick Santorum next. Drug, alcohol, and gambling addiction.